Okay, so you might come across a question asking you about igneous rocks, and sometimes the way they phrase them is with the mineral composition. So this question, the region's question is asking the possible composition for an igneous rock granite. So what you want to do here, you want to go to your reference table and look up your scheme for igneous rock identification. And at the top, we're used to this part uh, with mafic and celsic characteristics, but on the bottom is where the minerals are laid out for each type of rock. The first thing you want to do for granite, you're going to run a line anywhere in between granite. If they don't specify, always take it in the middle. So here's granite. I'm going to put a line right down here. Then you're going to take a piece of scrap paper. Much like you do for profiles, you're going to take that scrap paper. You're going to lay it right on the line from bottom to top. And then you're going to make tick marks. You're going to go across and make tick marks anytime the mineral composition changes. So here, mineral composition changes from amphibole to biotite. You're going to go ahead and make a tick mark there. By a tight to pledge place feldspar, make a tick mark there, right on the scrap paper. Uh, pledge place feldspar up to this is quartz. And go ahead and make a tick mark there. Make sure you keep the paper in the same spot. Uh, quartz going up to potassium feldspar, make a tick mark there, and then tick one off the top and at the bottom for where you started. So it should look like this. And you're all done. And it would be a good idea to either label the minerals here in the beginning section or just to memorize the order as you go through reference this chart. So now we're going to take that scrap paper, we're going to bring it over to the side axis, and you're going to count up the percentage of each mineral. So you know your bottom one's amphibole because this is where your line crosses through first. And amphibole, these little tick marks go by fives. So this looks like it's about, here's 5, here's 10, so maybe that 8. So you're going to want to write that down in your scrap paper. Or your question sheet, the amphibole is 8%. And now you can do one of two things. You could either read off here and put the percent. So this would be about 19, 19 minus 8, which you get there, so 11. Or you could lower this down so that you're always zeroing out your scrap paper. Both methods work. It's just a matter of preference. So here, for your next section, this would be shown biotite. Biotite is going to have a percent composition of 5, 10, little notch up there, probably about 11%. I'm going to keep bringing it down and zeroing out my tick marks. Uh, so this is my third mineral that we've crossed into a pledge place feldspar. Pledge place feldspar is going to have a composition of 5, 10, 15, just under 20, so I'm going to call that 19%. Bring it down again. This is going to show for our next one, which is quartz. Now you see it's mostly quartz, so zero all the way up to about 40. We call that an even 40 right there. And then bring it down one last time to zero and up to about 19. Okay, so now to check your work, what you want to do is count, uh, add up all of your percents, okay, and make sure you're near 100. You don't have to be perfect because, you know, we might have made it 19 where it should have been 20, or 20 where it should have been 19, so you might be one or two off, and that's perfectly okay. And you're going to go ahead and look back at that question, and usually these are multiple choice versions, so you just want to find the one that fits best with that composition. Okay, that's pretty much how you find the mineral composition for an igneous rock.